Don't act yeah. crotch. And you need to get some uh, swag behind this story. <laughs> All right, YouTube, we're here. We're live. New Poker Live podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, the time has arrived. That's right. Today, we are going to be talking with the whistleblower that will go down in the history of poker who helped expose the man known as Mike Possle, formerly Mr. Godmo, turned into the man that's been known to stare down at his crotch and play crotch stereoptimal C. T-O. We're going to talk all with Veronica today about what exactly the management said when she reported these allegations and they said they were completely fabricated. We're going to find out more about that as well. We're going to find out what it was like playing with such a gifted poker player when he had access to the whole cards in Mike Postle. And uh, I'm going to do a quick intro before we get into it. I hope I nail this. So a couple things I want to say, guys, is that uh, all these pods are going to be on iTunes as of tomorrow. I promise you, everyone keeps asking me to be uploaded. This one will be up there too. I want to give a big shout out to Doug Polk, Matt Berkey, the Sulfur Y crew, and the rest of the people making content about this situation. They've been fucking killing it. Nice work, guys, as well. A lot of other people have been out there doing really well. So it's uh, it's been really wild to see this. And I'm finally happy to have Veronica on the show to get her perspective on things. Uh, also, I did a podcast earlier with Ryan Rosillo from The Ringer, and I tried to explain this in terms that non-poker players could understand. So you guys can check that out if you're interested in that as well, too. And uh, that's it, guys. I'm getting into it today. So if I'm going to catch you up here, right? Here's what happened real quick. Quick overview, all right? There's a man named Mike Possel was alleged to be cheating on a live stream by a former Stones employee. That former Stones employee is joining me today. Her name is Veronica Brill. This employee brought her suspicions to the management and the management essentially called her a fucking idiot and said, you don't know what you're talking about. This is completely fabricated. This is, there is zero evidence of anything suspicious happening with this man who just can't lose. This man over time, according to the data experts, and by experts, I mean, they're not really experts. We don't exactly know their data background. Many people have accumulated data that shows Mike Possel allegedly up near 300 some thousand dollars, 77 winning sessions of 87 winning sessions, 20 winning sessions in a row. And we've been able to pinpoint the moment where Mike Possel became a man that stared his phone in the eye to a man that looked down at his crotch to look at his phone. And we're going to get all into that, guys. I think that's a quick overview. And now it's all blown up. The investigation's underway. A lawsuit's been filed. Veronica's on the lawsuit. And uh, that's it, man. Join me on the podcast. Veronica Brill. Veronica, welcome officially to the show. Thank you, Joey. Thanks so much for having me. And uh, shout out to the 2 Plus 2 analytics team. Give them some respect, Joey. I know. Listen, <laughs> those, guys, those, those guys are gods. Please let me know if the audio is okay, guys. And the people out there in the chat, I need to give a proper intro because I don't know if you're tuning in right now and it's 2028, I don't know what you know. So I need to do my introduction, okay? <laughs> I'm going to teach you guys how to do a podcast. You do your introduction, you introduce your guest, and then the guest speaks. You go back and forth. That's how the podcast goes. So Veronica, how has this time been for you, my friend? You've been, I see you active on the social media streets. I feel like you feel like you've been vindicated. You know, you came to me with right. this concern about a week before you went live and you said, hey, Joey, like, uh, you know, I think something's happening here. I'm like, listen, I'll take a look. Like, y'all gonna have your back. I got your back. I'll put it out there because I understand that because I've come forward with things like this about America's Card Room. When you come forward with something like this, you're gonna get a lot of blowback. And there's gonna be a lot of people who are saying, no, what are you talking? This is preposterous, right? And you were very concerned about that. You knew this would cause you some stress amongst your community in Sacramento. You're very close to many people in that community as well too. So just kind of talk about what's it been like since you came forward with these allegations and, and kind of just seeing this process take place. Well, I have to thank you because you were the one person who really took the time to look through the hands. And I think if it hadn't, if you didn't start that snowball, um, I may not have been um, vindicated. I think that um, I, they wanted to basically lynch me at first, the first two days, I was basically laying under my couch uh, yes. in the fetal position, crying, sucking my thumb, but um, things have since turned around. Um, it took me like a week to post things. I contacted you on Tuesday before the Saturday that I posted. And, um, you know, I just appreciate you listening to me and, and, and treating me like a peer and right. thinking that maybe I do have something here because it didn't make sense to me. Uh, the last show I did commentary on, I was just like, and I'm sure everyone knows the story so far. Uh, we were all watching this high VPIP volatile strategy of his that 
um, equated to just mounds and mounds of money. And it never, the graph never went down. And um, I was just, after I made my complaint, nothing had changed. Uh, it felt like security was getting worse in the room. And I was like, fuck this, this guy's still doing this. I swear he's cheating. There's something fucking going on. And the only way I, the only way I think it's gonna be shown or the only way I'm gonna be able to move forward with these um, allegations is if I go public. Right. I don't think, I felt like Stones wasn't doing anything. I felt like Justin either didn't know enough about poker or was so mesmerized by Mike, which means he didn't know enough about poker or he was in on it. I didn't know, but either way, it wasn't going to get anywhere. Right. So who you're referring to is Justin uh, Caritis. Caritis, who is the tournament director of Stones, who right. was one of the biggest advocates of the show. He was in charge of the show. He was the one promoting Mike Possel. And I kind of want to go back to something. Well, I would, I'd like to also give him the name of meme director. Meme Stones director. Meme so he, director. he was the one who came up with the decision to dress up Mike Possel as a god as he was pillaging the other players on the stream <laughs> right. on a continuous I basis. Don't know. It, to be fair, I don't know if he made up all the memes and created them. So I'm well, not sure. I want to who... hire the meme creator. That guy came up with some cool memes. So hey, hey, that's content, quality content. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, watching it back, I like it. But I kind of want to go back to something you said about the idea of treating like a peer. And uh, I think that's something that a lot maybe people don't do in the poker world because they, 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 I don't know, right? They have some success. They think they're a fucking big shot or something like that. I try to treat everybody with respect no matter if you're a poker player, if you're in the media, if you're a recreational, if wherever you are, right? So when you come to me with concerns like that, like I, I, I don't know you as a person to whatever to say that, right? You're, you're one of the biggest ambassadors in the past in my eyes for Stones. So when I think right. about Stones Live, I thought about you and the, and the home game that you'd have. And I tried a lot to get fun. you in my game. Exactly. Before. You tried to get me. Like that's, that's what I associated. So if you're coming to me and saying, hey, there's something going on here, it'd be, if to me, it's like, why would she ever make this up? Like there obviously has to be a little behind that. Right. And then I start taking a look at it. The first session I go back to, I'm like, w wow, right? Like zero evidence, completely fabricated. I watched five sessions that first night. I spent about, I watched about 22 hours of footage the first night going through the hands, just looking at hands Mike Possel played, taking notes on his style, on his play pattern. And I say, what the fuck is going on here, right? This right. is not normal poker. Like this is obviously something's happening here, right? So when you're seeing this, right? And we've seen the clip here of you when, you know, I kind of want to, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll put the clip up here for the people at home to see. This was kind of the, the, the deciding factor here where Veronica it, was that, just like- th Those comments were- the tail end of me watching him just make perfect moves all night. When he, with with Marley's hand, when he folds top pair, he flops top pair right. with a gut shot. Hey, let me and let me let me, I, let me play that clip for the people out there, okay? I so, was I was just I just didn't understand how he was doing it. All right, here you guys go at home. So here's was the last moment, right, where Mike Possel. He's digging it, but he also looks slightly constipated. So Mike Possel is in a hand against Marley. And he mucks. This is what I'm talking he about, people. Pair. God. Possel takes the weirdest lines and gets people to lay down huge hands all the yeah, time. She has but the he has top pair and a straight draw, he's able to just lay down That's against the nut. Possel is just like a freak. He's just a freak of nature, it's like man. He knows. He's just a freak. This doesn't make sense. In like the best way, like I say freak with love, like maybe with a pH if that's what matters, but like I'm just saying. That's insane. And he's also got the highest effing V pip. Yeah. Welcome to Stones, baby. Welcome to the game of Possel. Insane. Insane. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> it's weird. Absolute insanity, guys. So looks like Chin over here on the hijack is going to pop it up to 150. See, the the one thing suited. about Possel is he's got this high V pip, but it's not like. It's not. Uh, it doesn't reflect on post flop play at all. True. Like he's super loose pre, and then post flop he's just like completely tightens up and changes. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, could... wow, I caught you. It was just it was so dismissive, and I I felt like it's like what the fuck? Fuck off! Let's move on. <laughs> Yeah. It, it, it's just like Shut a complete. Shut up with your lady brain. Yeah. Right. It's like you you come there with a a a very valid point. Right. This guy literally just folded 
a top pair to a turn continuation bet from a, a, a newer player who has absolutely no read on, who sits down and raises from the hijack position. Right. I, I mean, right. A, a, and obviously, so I'm thinking in this spot, Veronica, right? Like you've reported this before, right? So how long before this moment on, this was, I believe, sept, in, in middle of September. Right. At what point in time did you report your suspicions of that Mike Possel was doing some sort of cheating with the people in charge of the Stones live production? So March 21st, I had to look back. I text Bart Hansen March 22nd, I believe, about it, and I was very upset. So March 21st, I told them I was assured that there was absolutely zero chance that there was any cheating. I was told that I didn't understand poker. Uh, Excuse I me. So, 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 can let's go back. So, Justin told you this. Yes. Okay. Justin. Can you? Can I you sat be, in the. Sorry. Okay. Just be clear about this for one second. So, these. Tell me the things he told you. He said you didn't understand poker. Right. Okay. He, he said I didn't understand poker. I didn't understand Mike Hossel's style of poker. He said that there is no such thing as GTO. That a lot of the players are jealous, which is funny. Which is funny because. No such thing as GTO. Same, I need to have a conversation with this guy. GTO is a way of life. It's, it's almost like they were running the, they were running like the, what they were going to say to everyone together. Like everybody's jealous. Everyone's just gossiping and they're jealous. Um, you know, he, he's got the Martingale strategy. What the fuck is that in poker? And I guess someone told me, oh, you, there's a potential you could do it in PLO because you're, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. Listen, the, 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 yeah. Anyone that said that is clearly fucking terrible at PLO. <laughs> I just, okay. I, I've as, never heard it i was like this is not a thing in poker this is a this is a gambling roulette thing but yeah I it was so dismissive and it was so pompous because instead of saying look this is a big allegation if you are actually serious about this veronica we have to look into this maybe we should take this player off the table maybe we should look back at some footage maybe mm -hmm. we should get some professional poker players to give us some insight and then we'll let you know and then make those make all of that investigation public and then get the guy back on the stream and redeem himself. It could have been done privately. If he wasn't cheating, it could have been done privately. No reputation would have been at stake and everything would have been cool. But instead, I was dismissed. Casey was dismissed. Uh, I think Bart Hansen talked to them about it too. Nothing was done and it was gross negligence. So let's talk about this, this, this investigation, right? So you report your concerns to Justin. He tells you that you're... You, you're, you lack the ability to understand crotch theory right. optimal, CTO, the, po the, possible, <laughs> the possible play style, the looking down at the crotch. So he tells right. you you're, you're, you don't understand what's going on. First of all, I mean, I mean, come on. But okay, so he tells you that. And then what does the investigation entail exactly? What takes place with that? Like, because I heard I Mike Possible was not even asked anything. So I don't even know that there was an investigation. I was told that there's an outside agency checking their um, servers and computer systems for security. Right. I don't know what that means. And sometimes I think looking back at what may have happened, how the cheating happened, the system might've been working fine. It was just projected potentially in Justin's uh, tournament director computer there in the corner. And then maybe Mike Fossil was also getting hands on his phone. It doesn't mean that the, equi the equipment was tapped into. It means the people who were working were giving him the information. Uh, there must be some sort of, um, it was broadcast. It must have been broadcast on something because um, I know that Justin Caritis had access to the live stream live and so did the general manager. So I so, was told. Right, so so what you told me was that Justin Caritis, he watched the live stream at his desk, which was maybe five to 10 feet away from the table. And as we've come to see, Justin Caritas and Mike Possel have a very close relationship and, on, and they've worked together in the past on Mike Possel's dream poker show, the idea that he came up with that had one stream on Stone's I have Live. A, I have a thought about that too. Sure, what, give me, so, so give me the thought on that. Okay, so it, my hypothesis is they use that as a front, potentially. Okay. If, if they were working together, this would have been the perfect opportunity because they they only had one show, but they did a test. Right. So during this test, they had access to the RFID table, to all the equipment, the tech was set up, and they may have been able to test out their cheating theory or whatever they were going to do if they did it that way. 
I think that that would have been a prime opportunity in broad daylight in front of players. They had access to the table. They were testing the table. They were testing maybe the microphone that Justin used to wear. They were testing how it looked on the computers. I think that would have been prime opportunity. So what you're referencing is a, a, a test that happened before the show in 2017. So if you go on the Mike Postle Twitter page, he does say, we are testing this privately, me and Justin. If you'd like to be a part of it, let us know. So this is confirmed by Mike Postle on the Twitter. So there is confirmation of this taking place. And of course, they could have tested it. We don't, we don't exactly know right now. We don't know. Who's involved, right? Does Justin know? I mean, it, it'd be hard pressed to not understand something's happening. So I, I guess, so you, you report things, right? And right. you continue working with the production. You continue with commentary. You continue watching Mike Postle play. What are your thoughts and what are your interactions with Mike Postle like at this point? Because even though he says he didn't find out about it till recently, I believe that is a complete lie. And I believe that he was very aware that investigation was taking place and he was looking to switch up his potential style and or methods of deception along the way. And he developed multiple different methods, including one we may have been covered right. last night, which actually, which actually have to do with, um, with some sort of device on the body, which we can kind of get into later. We discussed this in length at the live stream last night, a new theory that popped up. So at this point in time, what are your interactions with Mike Posto like? Because you guys have played together plenty of times on the stream in your Veronica and friends game. Right. Um, this was probably the most difficult part because I did open up to a pretty close friend who did play on the stream with me. Mm -hmm. And I said, I think he's cheating. I don't know if I want him in my game anymore. I don't remember if that was before or after I talked to Justin. I did speak to other poker players who were playing professionally, some of which said, there's no way he's cheating. And others said, you know, there's a possibility, but we don't have evidence. I kind of felt like I don't want to put this man's, um, you know, his professional identity at risk and just like, you know, throw dirt on it and have him not be invited to any games if I'm wrong, which it, I felt at the time I was wrong. Also, I felt like I trusted Justin. I trusted Stones. I trusted they were regulating this as best as possible. I trusted that there was a real investigation. I trusted the security of, of the live stream. And I thought Stones was upholding the integrity of the game mm -hmm. as much as they possibly could. I would have, I, it felt weird, but I, I wasn't sure. So I kept him in my game because I was like, I'm just a fucking asshole who thinks this guy's cheating, but he's just good. And I don't know it because I don't know poker enough. And I've been told that there was an investigation done. So I was just doubting myself. Wow. And then after the last time, so I did a, the last, I haven't been doing much commentary this year because I moved away, but I remember Jake and I did a show together and I think you and Doug referenced that show quite a bit. We both got out of the booth like, what the fuck is Mike doing? And we were pretty sarcastic towards the end of the show. And it's fun watching lots of action in a live stream. It's mm -hmm. fucking crazy when there's, you know, bluff and rebluff. But when it happens, every show, every other hand, and he's just constantly making the right, right moves. We were just confused. And then, so the last commentary show I did is when I was like, fuck this, I'm pretty sure something's going on. And if I'm wrong, then at least I know that there would be a proper investigation. Yeah. I mean, li listen, did I answer I, your question. Right. <laughs> I, I mean, you said a lot there, right. And first of all, I do want to say that, you know, it's pretty fucked up that, that you had to feel this way, right. Where you're put in this position where you're made to feel like you're you're a complete idiot, you know, by this, by this alleged management who is allegedly investigating this situation, who clearly, I, I, I mean, maybe they close their eyes and they, they, they tape their mouth shut, right? They're blind and, and they're fucking not talking, right? Like, I don't understand what kind of investigation could have possibly done into this. These are the worst investigators in the history of investigations, and they should right. be ashamed of the investigation that they did in this situation. I can understand you having these concerns and coming forward and being felt like you're fucking crazy. I, I, I get that too, as I, I've had a little experience that myself in the past, which. If I could take it to a, add another layer to it, the conversation. And I feel like if I could just read to you verbatim, the conversation, it would sound one way, but it felt so pompous. It felt like this, the, he was, you know, he had this floss pick all the time. It's, Veronica, you don't even understand like 
Mike Hustle's just the greatest. Just right. like, and, and he's selling me something. He's, you know, he's selling, he's selling me something that I don't want to buy. It doesn't make sense to me. And I was just like, well, fuck, I guess if, I mean, if you've done an investigation, I totally trusted him. So yeah. And that's, and that's where a lot of my doubt came from. Yeah. I, I think a lot of people out there feel like it's a very courageous thing to do to put yourself out there, even in the face of, of the people that are in power telling you that you're wrong. And then also potentially ruining these friendships that you built up in the community, because obviously people, they, they thought he was some type of God. They thought he was God's gift to right. poker. He tells it he himself. He was promoted as some type of God, definitely. And I yeah. think maybe for the majority of people, especially if you're tuning in once in a while or you're doing commentary once in a while, it's like, oh my God, he's so sick. This is so crazy. And then off, off camera, Justin Caritas would be like, oh yeah, Mike just was on, on like such a cooler. He's on like a 25K downswing. When I hear, when I think back at every interaction I had with Justin Caritas, it makes me think that there might be some potential that he was involved. Because why would he have to tell me? I'm like, wow, uh, fucking Postle just like killed it tonight. He just made the craziest calls and then he folds like, always making the best folds. He's like, yeah, but he's on a huge downswing. This is just a heater. And I'm like, well, I haven't seen him in three weeks, so maybe that's true. It's it's hard now looking back, we have hindsight, right? We're looking at all the hands. Everybody has seen hand after hand after hand. But when you're, and, and to, you know, um, to be fair to the commentators, uh, which I was one of them, when you're not in the booth every day, when you're not watching every hand it, it's hard to be able to tell this pattern. Um, also, when you're doing the commentary, you're told to be nice. You're told to like make it an exciting and fun show. And when the sick shit happens, you're just kind of promoting it because that's what you're told to do. You're not supposed to sit there in the booth like I did and be like, what the fuck is going on with this guy? This is fucking, he's cheating. You know, like you're not supposed to say that. So in their defense, I think they were doing what they were asked to do. Right. So the, the order came down for management to the commentators that you should you should insert the the God possible hit every weird play he makes. You should insert that as far I, down as possible and really just build this guy up to be this this this. I don't know if it was like that. OK. Uh, and let's just say like not when we say management from upper management, I would say this was a one man show. This is a Justin Carrera oh, one show. man show. OK. Yeah. He walked around with his with his uh, floss pick and picking his teeth and telling you what to do. <laughs> but he but he basically said, like, look, and, and it's a it's a good thing to not criticize, overly criticize people and not make them feel bad about their place. Players would often call him after be like, oh, Veronica was so critical of me. And then next time I have to just like sit there and not say anything, you know, and you're just you're it's supposed to be a nice show. No one wants to hear that they're shitty. I mean, I don't care, but for myself. <laughs> yeah. So Justin Caritas told you at some point in time that Mike Possel was on a $25,000 downswing in order, I, to like, in order to counteract the idea that he's only winning. It, it was like 20 or 25K, but he did tell me. I was like, Fuck. yeah, I, re I remember him kind of counteracting what I was saying. I was like, okay, well, I guess this is a heater. Like I haven't seen him in a while. This is a sick heater. So let me, let me make sure I'm understanding this correctly, okay? So Justin Caritas has access to the live hole cards in the back. Justin Caritas has a previous working relationship in some capacity with Mike Possel. Justin Caritas is friends with Mike Possel, who would spend time together outside of Stones Live. Justin Caritas is the one that you brought your concerns to that let you know that there was absolutely zero evidence of cheating going on by Mike Possel. Justin Caritas is also the same person that said these allegations were, are completely fabricated and yeah. that these should have never come forward without any type of proof. Justin Caritas was also the one who told you that Mike Possel was on a 25K downswing when it's reported that Mike Possel very rarely played outside of the stream and Mike Possel going through the records there is a, I mean, there's one losing session that happened in the summer when coincidentally in enough, Justin, yeah. Justin Caritas was not present in the game. Uh, can I tell you that during my game, and that was another thing that kind of assured me, he lost in my game and he was playing normal. And I was like, well, I'm, 
I guess I'm wrong. Look, he's playing normal. And then I was back to, okay, I was wrong. I, I shouldn't even consider that Mike's cheating. And then he went back. He went back to his old style. So the game that Veronica is referring to, I believe, is on June 18th, 2019, when it's reported that one or more people who are regularly present at the Stones Live gaming, uh, Stones Live stream, these people were in the were at the World Series of Poker here in Las Vegas. Veronica hosted her regular Veronica and Friends game, which Mike Posse took part of with completely different body language. Uh, he had the hat backwards. The phone was not in the crotch area this time. And right. he played like a normal player. He got it in bad and he lost, which is what happens. He played shitty fucking hands and he didn't win because that's how poker works. You play shitty hands pre-flop, you're going to lose some big situations. And that was his biggest losing session on the stream in the history of what we've seen in 2008, 2019 on Stones Live, where he lost about $6,000, I believe. And now I believe what happened there is that he decided to play like this because he knew that you made these allegations against him. And I believe that they continue to put you in the booth, especially with the recent 10, 25, 50 game that took place. And you were in the booth for that game. I believe that you were present at both of these moments because it was meant to alleviate the concerns that you may have had about this situation. And clearly they thought about this from a uh, completely idiotic standpoint. And their strategy was very poor, but at the same time they did get away with this for an extended period of time. So I what? want to talk about alleviating concerns. Sure. Let's go ahead. So initially, I I think a, a few people may have come up to Justin and say, hey, something's up with Mike. First, there was um, there were complaints about his cell phone. So they said no cell phones at the table. And I heard their cell phone policy had changed multiple times. Okay. But one of the concerns was um, about Mike's play. They went to Justin. Everybody's been going to Justin. So in Justin's, in Justin's mind, he said, I'm going to bring Mike Postle into the booth. I'm going to have him explain his thought process of how he plays, and it's going to be all better now. And, and it didn't, I don't think it worked. I don't think anybody bought it. I think we saw a man, we did not see the correlation between the thought process and how the hands are played. We didn't see this like sick human on the poker table and now we see him behind the booth and we're all waiting with bated breath like what is this genius going to tell us right. and then it was just like yeah put him on ace king kind of talk and it didn't make sense to me and i was like fuck he's selling this and i think if justin is involved i think that was his downfall is i think he's smart and i think he's organized but he doesn't fucking know poker and in some ways i think maybe possible doesn't either really I think he. Whoa, whoa, hey! Be, I, no, no, we, no, I'm saying. Are we no, talking about I'm, Mike Possel, who alleged on a Mike Minasal podcast that he is one his, of the best players in the world? Well, okay, his redemption tweets. These are the videos that are going to redeem me. They fucking made it worse. They made it worse, and I'm like, what is it? Does he even know now? Is he even worse than I originally thought? Because I thought bang, he was bang. still pretty good. 2015, any up player of the year. They used to say it all the time. But it, I, the, the, the. Hands that he posted, I was in shock. I was like, he, does he know what he posted? Does he think this is redemption? This is a really good point, Veronica. I, I mean, I, I, the hands he posted are, are obviously ridiculous. He posted one hand where he folded on the river with 8-6 in a three-bet pot when the board ran out 8-9-10-queen and undercard. And he's like, yeah, if I hero-folded fourth pair, I knew Rich had seven <laughs> deuce. Like, and as you said... I've watched I've watched almost every interview I could find that Mike Postle has done, including the one with Justin Caritas when they had a when they broke down five or six Mike Postle hands, which I believe that interview took place to alleviate concerns that something out of line was right. happening. And if you watch the tone of the interview, it is clear that Justin Caritas is leading the way in this interview. And now I can see two arguments for Mike Postle's lack of articulation when it comes to poker or poker strategy at all. And one is that he just doesn't do it very much. And I can understand that. Maybe he just plays in his head. He's a bigger feel player. He plays the crotch right. theory optimal style. Um, you know, it makes sense to me that maybe... If it's a feel player, why isn't he looking? You're asking the questions, Veronica. You really are, right? <laughs> now, he could also argue that he is looking in some ways. And I've, I've told, and these are words of Mike Postle, that Mike Postle excels at understanding human behavior and 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 tells at the table. He can look at a man or woman at the table and just 
by how they look, how they dress, how they play with their cards, how they play with their chips. He can pinpoint them on a hand. And when Mike Postle is locked in in the matrix, the man is able to see things that other people can't see. And Mike Postle has to play not 100% to his ability because people won't play with him. Now, when I've read this, this is the most ridiculous thing I may have ever heard in my life. And if this is possible for him, then that's amazing. But even players like that are going to fucking lose sessions. And as we saw with Mike Postle, that was not taking place. And it was just the most obvious thing of all time. And you bring up a great point, Veronica, which is that this kind of does show that whoever was doing this, right, they didn't understand poker very well. And it seemed like Mike Postle really got off on this glory of being called a god. He finally got this recognition that he's been seeking out for I think many, it was an many years of his career. Exponential enjoyment. Yeah. Like it started out slight and then he started, it really built up his ego. Mm -hmm. It seemed that way. Yeah. So why do you think you were brought in to commentate during these later, later Postle streams? Well, to be honest with you, the last time I did commentary, it was supposed to be Veronica and Friends. But I decided I didn't have time for Veronica and friends. My life is moving in different directions. I wanted to give uh, one of my good friends, Anthony, the game. Uh, my friend who we call four bet Jesus in the game. He always wears the hat, the long hair. Cowboy hat, yep. So, yeah, so he's been, he was going to host it for me. And I said, look, I'll come in and do commentary one last time. And um, if you ever want me to, you know, I'll, I'll definitely help you out. But I just don't want to drive to Sacramento as often as I do. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of it. I text Justin. He's like, okay, you're booked. I think Justin underestimated, you know, and, and I, I'm not a professional poker player. I'm not the greatest poker player out there, but I think he underestimated my ability to recognize patterns and, and understand uh, outcomes in poker. And it's never, the graph isn't always linear or exponential. You know, the graph, kind of goes up and down and not, I would say most poker players are not winning poker players. Bang, bang. And so it was not, it, well, and, just to specify, not people in my chat right now are a majority winning poker players. The losing poker I'm players, not. they hang out on my buddy, Doug Polk's channel. So around here, <laughs> Veronica, this is actually one of the very rare poker channels on YouTube that is comprised majority. Listen, if you're a winning poker player in the chat right now, Smash the like button and give me a number one. <laughs> give me a number one in the chat I right now. I feel like I'm gonna get a lot of hate. I'm talking about like you know most people are like wreck players, right? And it, it fucking poker's gotten harder. We all know that. If we can't, well, admit my guys are my guys are studying. I don't know. Like my audience <laughs> is made up of, of of tough players who continuously evolve their game. I who love it. Want to be wrong. the best I'm they sorry. can be. I mean, it's a rare thing, right? It just kind of is what it is. You know, we 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 don't like to brag about it like Mike Posso. We like to stay under the radar with this. But I'm not afraid to admit it, just like Mike Posso wasn't afraid to admit that he's one of the best poker players in the world. I'm not ashamed to say that my chat are the best poker players on poker channel YouTube, okay? If it's your just... chat could avoid Bay 101, because uh, that's where I mostly play now, just avoid that casino altogether, as, because I don't want to lose against them chronically. <laughs> okay, there, guys, in the, every, no one's allowed to go to Bay 101 again, please. Is that, is that, <laughs> so, so that's your new home, that's where you're playing now, Stone, is Stones Live, is your relationship with Stones Live severed at this point in time after I mean, this? What, I mean, I, it's done, Stones Live is done. I think if they, if they come back, uh, they definitely have to be more transparent with their security measures, with who's running it, with how it's run, and um, they need to be held accountable. Mm -hmm. I would definitely, like, I loved the live stream. It was a community event. It was, you know, visitors would come from out of town and they wanted to play and they wanted to meet the regulars. And it's such a, a cool atmosphere. Stones is such a nice card room. It's what it's, it's my favorite card room out there. Mm -hmm. So it's, I'm scared to go in there right now. Um, but yeah, I think, I don't know if Stone's Live is going to continue. So th there's one thing I want to talk about, which a few people have brought up and they say, is Veronica involved in this situation? Now, Veronica, I ask you here, is that, did you have any information about what was happening or where at any point in time you involved in this situation that was going down and something happened and then you're coming forward as some sort of revenge or some sort of jealousy or some sort of hatred towards what took place. That's ridiculous. Okay. Uh, if I knew something sooner, if I actually knew something, I would have reported them right away. I would have gone to the police. If Mike Postle actually said, hey, I've got this device, I'm doing this, I'd be like, 
you're fucking nuts. And I would, I'd go to the police. They probably wouldn't arrest him because I don't know if they do anything about cheating allegations. I don't mm -hmm. know. Um, yeah, this is this has obviously been a question people have had. They've said, "Well, what if she's involved? What if she came forward to sort of get in front of it or save herself or anything like that?" I feel that like too. you're more involved than I am at this point. I feel like maybe I, you've I, got a percentage of this. I actually feel like I'm involved too. I, I mean, from from all the all from, I've done, I've watched this about 80 hours now. I've done over 30 hours of live streams. I feel like I'm involved. I hope somehow. you don't get a blood clot from watching all of these live streams. My leg, really my leg, it feels like a blood clot's forming in my leg right now, and I'm not sure I'm going to be able to travel anywhere else to use my exceptional poker ability that allows me to win at one of the highest win rates in the history of the beautiful game of poker. So yeah, unfortunately this blood clot is starting to fucking really take its toll on my left thigh. And um, you know, obviously these medical conditions are no joking matter. I, and we make jokes, I actually, we make jokes about this now because like it's such a ridiculous situation. I don't wanna joke about situation. that. It's, it's a serious um, health risk and uh, I don't wanna see anyone have a blood clot. So I actually, I mean, I don't, want I, mean, to I don't want to joke about that. I don't want to, I don't want anyone's health to be compromised. So, so in, in this situation, right, you're not involved in the situation, but you're around the production often. Are other people saying, Hey, like, uh, I think something's happening to you, or is this an isolated concern that you had? I know Casey Mills, she, weirdly, she came out on Twitter first. She was very pissed at you and very defensive right. about it and couldn't believe you did it. And then a few days later, she came out and said that she made her own allegations at some point in time. I have yet to talk to Casey about that. Um, that doesn't really make much fucking sense to me. Why you would come out and say that the, she would go at attack you for coming out and then say she also had concerns to me. This right. makes absolutely no sense. But did anyone else share their concerns with you on a private level? And was this the talk around the room? Like, like, I, I mean, how was no one else talking about this? So I would say among the more prominent poker players, um, it was probably talked about it was it was talked about okay. um it was lightly talked about there were some hands um you know i'm in some of the group chats but not all of them of course i hear you know um second hand from the discussions uh, about the discussions about the hands um yeah i think people were concerned but then people were like well he's just a whale on a heater oh he's just clicking buttons um there was always uh this looming thing behind us like there's not enough evidence how would we ever know? We can't assault him while he's playing and rip off his hat or, you know, grab his phone. Like you just, you can't do those things. Um, yeah, and I just want to go back to uh, Casey's tweets. I, it's at first I was pretty upset, and I'm kind of having to deal with odd reactions from people. Right. Um, I would think my first instinct if i had a close friend or someone i knew when they if they were caught cheating i know you're laughing at someone in commentary but i would be disgusted i would be like get the fuck out of here you got it you're crazy i'd be angry at first and then i'd be totally yeah you're looking at your crotch but i don't no, uh, look at my I phone mean, calm down <laughs> <laughs> crotch theory optimal <laughs> I, I mean, Casey, Casey just had her way of processing the whole thing and i think she just you know did it on her in her own way and i appreciate her commend her for coming out right so in terms of other people being in on it, are there other people that you suspect might be in on what's taking place? Or do you think this is a one-man operation? A man, no, this isn't a one-man operation. Come not on. a one-man operation. Come on, Joey, come on. You know better than this. <laughs> no, there's no, I don't think it's a, it's a 007, like, van in the fucking parking lot, like, guys wearing, like, you know, hoodies and, like, sitting on a, on a, on six different computers in a van. No, I think it's like, I think it's simple. I thought initially it was simple. Like he had something in his leg that like beeped or like, you know, uh, electric electrocuted him lightly whenever he was ahead or something. Ooh. But I think like, I think like someone, um, I think, you know, I feel like there's a chance that Justin is heavily involved. Mm. And then I think that if there, if there was no, mm. Um, monetary gain for the people in the back. I think there was complacency. Interesting. So you mentioned this device, right? And now on last night's show, we speculated on what kind of device that could be. And obviously there's all types of device that could I be. I think it evolved right. also. So it started out as one thing. Here's my theory on the situation. Here's my theory what happened. We got a man, a man named Mike Possel, right? July it was June or July 18th, 2018. At some point in time, he becomes a man who looks his opponent in the eyes to a man that looks down at his crotch when he seems to be in a tough spot. Obviously, 
the suspicions are going to mount from there as this uh, uh, massive amount of winning takes place and he becomes a player who seems to play more. Then the system starts to evolve. It's very easy to find out how these things work and how other cheating scandals have worked. Then Can I put system- in a prequel there? A prequel? I think that prequel. there might have been some testing beforehand after that show oh after his show after they did the dry run and okay. the test that okay. he announced i think they might have tested it throughout I, like i don't think they just went gung-ho like i think that they tested one or two hands throughout streams after that and then one day they got ballsy and said let's fucking do it let's do this let's ah. fucking go uh, okay sorry for interrupting go ahead it's okay it's okay but then over time right I had it in my mind. I still got it in my mind. I've been I've been locked in on this stuff. This is like this is my topic. I'm locked in. I'm like a Mike Postle Stones Live expert at this point in time. So over time he starts winning, right? Of course the system's gonna evolve at that point in time. Then at some point in time down the road, they have an interview to alleviate the concerns, right? They start saying, We gotta promote this guy as a god. We gotta promote that he is just so fucking good. He is such a god at the game of poker that what this man does is just beyond us. And we're going to constantly do this. And this is what we got to say. And Mike made the people like him. He used his, his, his charm or whatever you want to say. He makes people around him like him that are in charge, that are doing commentary. And they want to promote him as well, too. Okay, kind of goes from there. The system evolves. Eventually, the hat takes place. And the bone conductor maybe comes in. The earpiece might come in. And then, as you said, maybe the signaling device takes place. And I know Mike, you know, he's talked on stream like, you know, I mean, last night I watched a very vulgar stream. They're talking about a lot of sexual things in nature. So maybe Mike is kind of in that world of what like the online, like that, that cam girl world where there's the toys that the girls have that you can signal from anywhere in the world. You could have somebody signal to you and it'll kind of buzz, you know, buzz and shake. And you got to like, why is this guy so animated at the table? He's like laughing. He's like smiling after he bluffs you like he can't control himself. He's like a man who, who just can't control his emotions. He's like fucking moving around, like, I mean, grabbing his head like he's an NFL quarter. Like he's, like he's Aaron Rodgers in Super Bowl 52 at Tom Brady. I think they were warning. telling him something and, and telling him kind of a joke. And that's why he started laughing. Like, here's their cards. Uh, and yeah, I think maybe, maybe he's shit. got something like inside and he's just like vibrant, you know, like, I, I don't know. Like, it, it's just so strange the way that this guy's mannerisms changed after July 18, 2018, Veronica. Now, when you see this guy moving around like this, he's he's laughing at his opponents when he's when he's jamming it all in with the five deuce offsuit on the turn with with a fucking bottom pair. Uh, what are you thinking when you see a man betting the turn with uh, right. eight high? What do you, what right. do you like? What what are I just like? The thing is, though, I think this was a sales tactic. They were packaging up him up and selling it, and I think a good amount of viewers might have been buying it. But the thing is, poker players are like. They're, they're driven by data. They're driven by, uh, they're relying on results and not people vouching for them. Uh-huh. So I think I think that a lot of people, well, I would say a good amount of people were catching on and not buying what the fuck they were selling. Right. What was I seeing? I would say like it, when he was in my game, he I wasn't noticing so much because my games were really rowdy. We had a lot of wine. We got out of line. Girls everywhere, you know. Um, you would have enjoyed it. But uh, I didn't notice so much. But I did notice just a lot of six spots and him always bringing in the chips. I wouldn't have enjoyed it, Shelby. Oh, sorry. I wouldn't that have. Was... I told my girlfriend I wouldn't have enjoyed it. I would have hated it. But we would have brought Shelby. Shelby would have enjoyed if, it. If, if, if Alicia was twerking in my face... And she was rubbing herself on me like she was maybe doing to my man Frank the Tank. I would have hated that. That would have been that would have been terrible. I would have had such I would have had such an unhappy to, unpleasant time in that game, Veronica. You're right. <laughs> so ha- I'm so happy I didn't go play that. Game. I'm actually surprised um, to see some people missing from the lawsuit. Yeah. So let's talk about this lawsuit. A lawsuit's been filed. Thirty million dollar lawsuit against Justin Caritas, against Mike Postle, and against stones live correct so 30 million dollars and it's a class action lawsuit brought together by a combination of lawyers including a player who played on the show and also poker player and lawyer and people don't know she's a lawyer because she's uh out of line kelly minkin is one of the lawyers that's going to be helping out here and then a number of different players are on this class action lawsuit and i'm told some players are filing their own independent civil suit as well too so you said that that's news to me 
<laughs> I, I know a lot. I, I, the things I know, I wish I, I'd like to talk more about, but they're kind, you know, some, you know, you never know, right? Down the road, we'll get more into them things. But I want to talk about this lawsuit. So you said that you're surprised that certain people aren't involved on the lawsuit. Now, are you suspicious that there might be other players involved with the operation that played in the game with Mike Postle as well, too? It's so easy to speculate. It's so easy to go down this rabbit hole of everyone being involved. I think if a lot of people were involved, everybody would have known about it. I think there were just like a tight knit group involved. And I think there were a few people who knew and turned mm. a blind eye, mm. potentially. Um, I think it's interesting that a few people who are regulars in my game are not in the lawsuit. I'm not, I think people are coming to terms with this. Um, and some people are in shock especially people who are close to him. So they're either in a lot of shock and they don't know what the fuck to think anymore because they're they're Everything's been shattered that they knew about Mike or maybe they knew. Right. Maybe they knew. Maybe they turned a blind eye because he's his buddy. Never know. Right. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know who knows what could happen in that situation too. So there's been speculation about that. We don't know anything like that. I, I personally have not, Web going through the hands. I haven't really been looking for anything from anybody else, but I think in a, in a situation like this, there's going to be a lot of theories thrown around. I right. think there's going to be a lot of people accused of being involved and rightfully so, because this has gone on for so long that, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if you told me anyone's in on it really. Like uh, how, how, I don't know. I'm not on the ground there. And I think you're in a very unique position in that you're on the ground. You've dealt with these people when it comes to coming up with these ideas you clearly are one of the people who, who has the best idea of where to go with these ideas and what to think about these ideas too. Right. But my perception is clearly is only from an analytical standpoint. Mm -hmm. I was looking at him, the, the way he played and it didn't equate to his results. I was looking at the way he, um, his cognitive view of hands mm -hmm. and his, uh, the engineering of his thoughts in, in his hands and then how he played. Those didn't match. There was no bridge between those things. So I was looking at it from a different standpoint. I didn't have any evidence as far as, you know, a wire in his leg or using his phone or anything like that. So, um, I, I mean, the hands I sent you, I thought were completely to me, they they were completely, they were nothing I'd ever seen before. And really, I had to pass the baton to you and say, you know, I need you to look at this with a with a fine tooth comb because I don't have the poker knowledge to then take this to the next step. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that... it didn't make sense to me, but I couldn't tell you exactly how. I just was like, you don't fucking four bet the turn with eight high. Like, it's just so fucking weird. Yeah, I think that when I started taking a look at the hands, I came from a very objective point of view where I was going into it that the guys, he must not, he must be innocent, right? There must not be anything happening. So I was, I think I was a great person to look at it because I, I didn't, I didn't know anything about the guy. I didn't know anything about the game. And one of the first right. things I did was message him. And I said, Hey, what's up with this? Like these hands look very suspicious. And the answers he gave to me and the things he said to me are very similar to the things that he said on that Mike, the mouth Madison podcast, where just not the, not directly answered, right? The hands aren't directly right. answered. Like, why did you do these things? Why would you make these plays? Like, this makes absolutely no sense. How do you know what to do in every single raise pot or multi-way pot from any position when your opponents have the weaker part of their ranges and you're able to threaten those ranges perfectly? How are you able to do this at such a successful rate? You know, the, yeah, and the, how the, are you ever, he's never stacking off into the nuts. Right. I never saw him do it. And I've seen great players do it. Mm -hmm. um, it, it. Yeah, it, it all just didn't make sense. What do you anticipate happening with this lawsuit? So is this, I don't know much about the lawsuit area. I don't know if these are things that are filed and then they're planned to be settled at some point in time. I, yeah, I, what, what's, the, what's the realistic expectation that you and the other plaintiffs can have from this lawsuit? Yeah, so I'm just, um, I listened to Mac on Jonathan Little today and he was basically saying this is a, a civil suit. This is not a criminal suit. Um, we're basically asking uh, for, um, we're suing them for punitive damages and accountability. There, there needs to be a precedent set, and this is what I'm saying right now, 
that casinos cannot host these live stream shows and just be uh, relaxed about um, the security and who's handling it. There was no oversight over Justin. I, I think that the general manager of Stones um, trusted Justin like a son and everything he did, he agreed with. He was like, okay, I trust you. And I, I think that came back to haunt him because I think he, if he didn't know he was completely neglectful and if he did, then that's even worse. But yeah, we're, we're just having the casino and Justin and Mike held accountable at this point. And Justin is not being sued as though he's a part of it. He's just being sued right now as, you know, you didn't do anything about this, even though people came to you with it. Right. So you were, you were basically neglectful. So it's a, is, it, is it the same thing if he's involved? Is it is there a difference if he's I don't think it makes a difference at this at this point. Okay. It doesn't make a difference either way. Um, if he's involved, it's just as bad as if he just ignored it and let right. it happen. Right. Mm hmm. Want to shout Driven Progressive with the donation and you too, Poppy. You and Doug have killed it with your coverage on this scandal. Thanks for looking out for the poker community. Yeah. So I think my main motivation from this situation is that I have. I've gone and investigated a past poker site and I found a complete lack of security. We're going to notice some correlations here, right? A complete lack of security going on, a complete uh, like lack of knowledge and understanding about how to put a stop to what might be happening, a complete inability to properly investigate the accusations made at hand about what the problems are. And in that situation with America's Card Room in the past, when I went into that, I really thought I could make a change there. I thought I could get this bot situation at least cleaned up because they're rampant at the cash games on there. And yeah. I thought I could make a difference in terms of making this site a better place for the American poker players because a lot of American poker players play on America's Card Room. And I can't imagine what we don't know that's happening on that fucking site. So I was able to at least help the players get refunded money by these people. And I'm glad I kept on them because at some point in time, they just went crazy and they just started refunding hundreds of thousands of dollars from all these bot situations. And then they magically stopped. I believe it stopped after I stopped talking about it. And I'm looking at this situation. I'm saying, okay, like this can't, this just can't happen. This is a live stream poker game. This was the one part of the poker world I felt like was doing well. You have so many great productions out there that are building up their audiences. And I'm just like, this is so fucked up that this could be happening. And did if you, it's, and it's happening here, like where else is it happening at, man? Like, did you so, listen to uh, Berkey's and Christian Soto's uh, podcast about this initially? Uh, I listened to it, but what, what, what specific part are you talking so, about? So uh, Christian Soto was saying, uh, which I'd like to point out that we're good. <laughs> we cleared the air. Um, Christian Soto was saying like, maybe they didn't want viewership. Maybe they, maybe this was their cash cow. They wanted, you know, their 50 pl people viewing a night and they just wanted the players in there and this was just their means to vacuum up all the money to fleece people mm. this is just this was his um you know hypothesis and i think that's a fair thing to consider because they they didn't want i can tell you that from my perspective it seemed as though justin couldn't tell the difference between a technical commentator and a color commentator and i i sat him down a couple times and i said look I'm not a professional poker player. I would like it. I would like for you to bring in a professional poker player. I'll do color. They can do the technical part of the show. Will be a good balance. But he, it, for him, uh, it, a, a, a body was a body, uh, which I think is terribly managed. A what? A body was a body. Yeah, just like it didn't matter who was in there. He just threw anybody in there. So it, it, he didn't care if you were a professional or if it was like your first time watching poker. You're in there. You're covering. Good. Just. You know, don't say shit about people. Don't talk shit about them. But, I mean, the lack of professional poker players scrutinizing the game, being able to critically analyze the game, I think was detrimental and let it, it happen. It, ha it let it go on longer. I think. Right. Yeah, it, it, it's weird that a man like a Mike Postle, a man who's able to play at a godlike level as reported to by the operation, I'm amazed that these clips weren't ever on the internet because the guy, the plays that this guy was making were some of the sickest plays of all time that 
I would have thought that these would have been promoted in a better way. And with the high stakes cash game that went down, that Matt Berkey was a part of, that Christian Soto was a part of. Shout out to my man, Christian Soto, out there doing some great fucking work, buddy. Keep up the good work, Christian, the man. Beast. Listen, my yeah. man, my, I was saying my man Soto looks like he wants to take Postle in the ring for about 12 rounds, a little boxing match. He looks fired up. I'm listening <laughs> so to Soto. So do you, apparently. <laughs> no, 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 no. That was the heads up PLO match. I want to play him in, oh, in okay, a cage. Okay. I, that, was a, that was a cage, a caged heads up Potlin Omaha match where... We would unfortunately have to play with no clothes on because I don't believe that he doesn't have some sort of device on him and have to play the blind dealer cards from Walmart. And it was like a, just this like heads up PLO shout out. I believe he actually accepted my challenge on the Mike Madison podcast. So maybe at some point in time that match will take place. But yeah, they invited Christian Soto up there. They invited Marley up there as well too. And the game wasn't promoted at all. And I, I, I find that weird that they wouldn't hype up this game with these known players that Mike Possel was a part of where he was conveniently leaning on his left hand. I, 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 it's like maybe he had a migraine that day and he kept leaning and it coincided with him being in situations post-flop where, where he had a decision to make. I don't know if there's any correlation, you know, like I, I don't know where this comes from, whatever. So he doesn't play like that when he's not in God mode, right? No, no, he doesn't. Yeah. No, he, he does. He does I, not play like maybe, that. Maybe promoting that game was not their priority. Right. And I, I, maybe that makes sense. I guess, did, so you got, did you get the vibe that that wasn't a priority in terms of them growing their audience? I, I think uh, this is like a lot to unpack. I think that Justin, we, Jake uh, Rosenstiel, who did commentary with me, and I think um, local pros like Azan, who was in the room a lot, he's a part of those suit. I think a lot of people came up to Justin and said like, look, um, you need pros in the booth. We need, you know, we need three blinds or, or, you know, whatever recommendations I would make. And he would just be like, oh, oh, oh. you know, it, he kind of his his ego was greater than anything else in that room. It felt like now in hindsight, that's what it feels right, like. In hindsight, it feels like everything was dismissed and um, he he knew everything. And, oh, you don't you don't believe that Mike thought you. You think it's weird that Mike Postle's making these plays? Well, let me put out a meme and let me promote him as the best. If you look at their tweets, they're constantly putting out tweets of Mike Postle's hands like, here, buy this, buy this. Yeah, right? You believe it now? And it just seems weird looking back objectively in hindsight and looking back at every single situation that I was in with Justin. It seems like he may have been a part of it. And it seems like he was his motivation was not to improve the live stream and not we we're like let's get zoom cameras let's be like live at the bike um no no zoom cameras no let's just leave it like this why would we want zoom cameras then we could zoom in and maybe see mike better maybe see what's really going on better yeah maybe yeah. let's keep it let's keep it grassroots like keep let's keep it you know lower quality and um let's just fleece people maybe that was it it's fucked up man it really is it is fucked up. It's fucking disgusting. There's right. a fucking man dying of cancer in my game. That's disgusting. How dare you? How dare you fucking come into the game and cheat him and fleece him his last moments? Justin was the one who texted me to get him in the game. Sick. It's fucking sick. If he's in on it, he's fucking sick. It rough. makes me fucking angry. Yeah. I mean, understandable, and I'm, right? And I'm not saying that it's okay for anyone else, but it's just fucking like... I don't even know how to describe it. It's disgusting. And then he, you know, he, he was texting me. I posted, I didn't post all the texts, but you know, I posted on two plus two when he texted me as soon as he heard about my um, post. And I'm like, I, he did text me that I was like ruining his daughter's life, stuff like that. And I'm like, dude, if you're guilty, this, you're doing this. Um, of course, no, I mean, at the time I felt, like I wanted to throw up because I was not a hundred percent sure that he was cheating. Mm -hmm. But by Monday morning, when you had messaged me like, Holy shit, I looked at all these hands and, and it didn't look good. I was, I felt like the truth was going to start coming out. Yeah. I mean, your boy did it. So what you're referencing is Kevin racks, a, a man who uh, fucking dying of sarcoma cancer. This was his last summer. I tried to help him out in terms of getting his story out there in the poker world. He was able to get staked into more tournaments. He was able to get put into the main event. I had him on my show and unfortunately Kevin did pass away and, uh, you know, Two briefly after later. the main event and right. So this guy, Kevin Rax was in multiple games with Mike. Such Postle. a nice guy too. Yeah, man. I mean, good guy. 
you know, this, 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 you know, it, it's kind of, it really sad. It really, when I saw that watching it back, I couldn't believe it that he would fucking do this to this guy who's on his last tour of life. Like liter literally said, I'm going to, I'm going to kill myself. Like I'm, I'm dying after this. This is it. This is my last run. I just want to get in some poker and try to enjoy my life. And Mike Postle's in a game with this guy and he's going to fucking rip this guy off. It, it's, it's disgusting. It really is. I mean, these hands are disgusting. You see these players that continuously play that he seems to target or pick on or something like that. And these poor guys just get fucking abused and abused by this guy. Right. You got this guy, Aaron in there comes to mind. You, you got the guy, Brian in there that comes to mind. You got multiple players, even Ben, Ben Jackson, shout out to Ben, who I know that, that you're good friends with. I, I, multiple clips where this guy Postle is just fucking abusing and then laughing in their right. face as he does it. It, it can't contain his and, excitement. And then the memes, and then the memes adding fucking salt to the wound. Yeah. And if they knew, and if production or, or Justin knew and they fucking put these memes up, it's sick. And, and we can laugh about this, but in all seriousness, this is, this is not, this is not funny. What he did is heinous. Right. He stole money from people. We're supposed to play poker in a level playing field. You could study more than me. You can come with your set of tools. I can come with mine. Some of us want to come and play recreationally, but fuck this cheating shit. This should not be happening. Right. I definitely agree. Sorry, I get really angry. It's okay. Listen, I, I've been fired. I mean, I've been doing these streams. This has been my energy as I'm watching these streams and I see these hands. I'm just getting... I get fucking furious. I get pissed off. And then Doug put it into a couple of videos, like of me getting angry at my like peak angriest moment of live streams. Like, I'm just <laughs> yeah. like, this is that incredible. What is right? Like, what the hell is going on here, man? So I want to shout Dean, Dean Pagel and, uh, and Will Bengali. Well, Bengali, Veronica is so bad. Thanks, Chewy. I think he's just happy that we finally got a woman on here. They've been looking at my face now for about 30 some hours with all these live streams I've been doing is late at Sasha night. Sasha on here? Who? Sasha, so, remember when Sasha was on your podcast? I loved her. On your I, 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 I vividly remember Sasha. Let's I, get I, her back on. Get some more women on. <laughs> more? Do you think more women are better? Yes. Yeah, I, I think having my ex girlfriend on is a great idea to make my current <laughs> girlfriend happy. You're, you're oh, right. I, 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 I certainly see. I certainly see the, a, the, the arguments for the, for this, this, uh, this idea. A, she's a PLO fucking crusher. No one cares about your status with her. She is, she is PLO royalty. And I don't think other people would care about my status, but maybe one person that I know might care about this particularly. And she is the person I care about how right. she feels. No, I she's been that, rocking yeah. with me this entire time. She's been uh, the right hand man on the stream right now during these live streams. She's been keeping me nourished. She's been getting me food. She's been making sure that I could power through it with the people the... are going to be mad. Cause I got to meet her. You, you right? did. Yes. Yeah. So you met her before the stream happened. You, <laughs> no, you yeah. she's very um, infamous. No people. I've seen her maybe two or three times on here and, uh, and yeah, man, it's, uh, I guess going forward, right. When you see yourself on sports center, when Scott Van Pelt is up there and he says, this was brought to you by Veronica 2.0 and he gave us a shout out, gave you a shout out. He gave me a shout out for, for what we've contributed to this. And now for the rest of eternity and poker world will be linked together with this situation. How did this happen? Veronica reported it. Then this guy, Joey lost his fucking mind and just went nuts and just dug into it. And then it turned into sports center. Now there's articles on, on the ringer. There's articles on CNBC. There's all this stuff out there. What are your feelings when you see this take place? And it's just this, it's blowing up to this magnitude of, of what it is. So there's two sides to that. Cause one side of me is so happy that I wasn't wrong and I didn't fucking ruin this man's um, poker personality or, and make false claims and was this woman who didn't understand poker. But at the same time, it's so fucking sad. It's so fucking pathetic that these, you know, our local po poker players were being fleeced. People were coming in from out of town being fleeced. I feel like in some way it was like this narcissist dream come true. And, and all we were was just lining up to give him his money. Um, if Justin was in on it, I'm sickened by that. I trusted him. I talked to him about many personal things. I opened up to him about my son's passing. And I, it just kills me to think that Yeah, I think there's a good chance he might be in on it. Yeah. And I, it's killing me. Like I opened up to him as a friend. I trusted him. I trusted him with the integrity of the game. Yeah. I, I, 
I thought his morals were sound. I thought he had a good set of ethics. And I don't think that anymore. And I'm just in shock. I can't even imagine what his like best friends think. Have you, you know, heard, have you heard from, from, from Justin Caritas at all? Have you, has he talked no. with you? Has he spoke to you? Because it would seem to me that a man who has nothing to do with this situation would be going out of his way to speak to the people that are coming forward with these claims, people who he has a relationship with and not just a work relationship with, but a, a friendship with in some ways, you would think a man like this would be more than happy to communicate with you and say, hey, like, nothing's happening, nothing's going on. And I've seen no statement from him. I've seen him say nothing. And well, have I'll you... just tell you, sure. he runs the Stones uh, Twitter, both Stones Twitters. Okay. He was the person running it. So he didn't say anything directly to me or tweet at me, but his Stones tweets said a lot, right? They Saying did. that all the allegations were... What did he exactly say? All the allegations completely were fabricated, I believe. Fabricated. Was, and I looked up fabricated because I wanted to make sure I understood what fabricated was. And the uh, the definition of fabricated, for those that don't know, is invented or concocted, typically with deceitful intent. So basically, what they said is you are attempting to bring down Stones Live with these invented allegations that you came up with and came forward with. Yeah, I really thought that when this came out, it was going to be Justin responding with like, holy fuck, I didn't realize it was this bad. Veronica, I'm so sorry. We're getting him out of the game. We're going to make sure everything's taken care of. But they fucking went the other direction. They yeah. had Mike Postle's brother on the live stream on Monday. They didn't put any commentary in, but they ran the fucking live stream. And the people, not all of them, but the people who were going after me on Twitter, a couple people were sitting there. Wow. And Mike Postle. And like, what the fuck is this? Is this just a spit in the face of, of poker? Is this a spit in the face? This was Monday when Monday morning you put a bunch of shit on two plus two. And I think they were slow to receive this information, either blinded, uh, you know, willingly, or mm -hmm. they, they just still didn't comprehend that the two plus two analytics team was taking a deep dive into this data. So I, I, I think I, I first, I didn't think it was going to be this big. I didn't think that it would be handled like this. I didn't think they'd dig their heels into the ground, but Justin did the entire time. I think Stones is probably coming around. What was the original question? <laughs> this information. I mean, I think, I think we're kind of, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of, we're around I feel the like topic, we're going right? in circles, right? Yeah, in, in, in some ways, but at the same time, right. I think, I think it's, it's good to make this clear because obviously you seem very, very upset with Justin Caritas, right? It, it it seems like more of your hostility is actually aimed at Justin because it's I, it's clear that that this guy made you feel he made you feel some type of way about yourself for six six or more months here. Right? And Right, so I don't think uh, so I don't know how to break this down. I guess psychologically Mike Postle didn't ever you know, we're not really close friends. He would come and play my game and he was, it was friends? deceiving. He was considered an action player, but that was deceiving because that was just VPIP, right? It wasn't actual play. But um, I don't think I had the type of relationship like I had with Justin. Yeah. Um, I trusted Justin. I was like 100% convinced it wasn't Justin. Um, yeah, and, I, and I'm really shocked at who isn't on the lawsuit. I'm really shocked at the response I've received from some people. Uh, I would assume that most people, especially if they knew him, would be completely disgusted, would be just uh, unable to process this. But it seems like some people have just stayed like neutral. And maybe that's their way of processing things. So I'm trying to I'm trying to find a balance between like, is this person processing things in their own way? Mm -hmm. Or did this person just fucking know? Well, I, I believe what could be happening is that maybe they just haven't watched the tapes or maybe they're believing Postle's narrative that the jealous haters are cherry picking five, ten, five to 10 hands. And maybe, the, I mean, let's think these guys don't have Twitter. Let's say they don't have Twitter or YouTube. Let's say you, most of, if you want to be intellectually lazy, don't waste my fucking time. Well, there's, there I'm, are I'm a just, lot of intellectually lazy people out there. No, I'm just saying that it's, it's, it's already on a platter for you. It's not like we're asking you to run the fucking analytics and do the correlation, right? 
do, we're, we're like here, it's on a platter. Like two plus two is your platter. The analytics team of two plus two, thank you out there. Shout out to all of you guys. They did the job. Mm-hmm. You don't have to do anything. I either, I like, you could be the CEO Carry of it. this investigation. Just fucking sit on your ass and go through the threads and you'll see everything. Sorry. I feel like I'm fired up right now. You fired up. Listen, <laughs> now, now, now you need, I mean, listen, I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep it cool. But if you need me to raise that energy level over here, you know, I got about, I, I'm at, I'm at LFG, a level three. Joey, I'm in, LFG. I'm in my professional. Let's have a serious conversation with right. someone who put themselves on the line and put their career reputation, friendships, their entire life. They turned their life upside down voluntarily. It's making me emotional. I think there's a, there was like, it wasn't just like, oh, I'm going to sit here and watch these hands. It was like, I was deeply ingrained in this community. This is such, it felt like a slap in the face from Possum. And then anyone else who I now think there are anyone else involved potentially, it's an even bigger slap in the face. And anyone who knew maybe wasn't monetarily gaining anything from this, but right. if they turned a blind eye, I'm sick. I'm sick about it all. So where, where, do, you, would, where do you where do you go from here? What happens next, right? Like where where does your career go? Where does where does your where does your your place I in had poker? A career? Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, I obviously you do have a career. You are you are someone who is a professional poker player. You do have a an actual legitimate job, which is very rare in this poker world out there. And uh, and yeah, like what where do, where does your place in poker go right now? And do you plan to get another job? I mean, I'm sure people out there would be happy to hire you because. I think you've shown your character and you've shown the type of person that you are. I think when they hear you speak, I think they're going to think very highly of you as most people do. You're very likable. I think that people around you that have gotten to know you have liked you as well up until this moment when maybe they were pissed off that you came out with this. So I feel like if you do want a place in poker, you can continue to have that and you continue to be a part of things and you can find other jobs out there. And I think more people would be more than happy to hire you. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I kind of feel like I'm not doing a service to poker because I haven't been studying and I, I'm ingrained, engulfed by my job. I'm just, my job's taking up my entire life. I haven't played poker actually in a, in a while. I'm just haven't had time. Yeah. But um, you're, I don't know. I, you're an, you're an actress on Veronica Mars, right? Netflix right. picked up that show. So if you don't know, <laughs> Veronica is actually an actress. She is Veronica Mars on the Veronica Mars show right, that was canceled, right. but now it's on Netflix. So little known fact about you that you Autographs are- Autographs in the mail, Joey. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, I thank you very much. No, what's your what's your regular career? Is it a secret? Do we keep it a, are, are we are we private I, with- I'm, I, I work in Silicon Valley, I work in tech. I do software implementation and customization and clinical analytics. How, 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 could, it, how could someone with that career ever possibly understand the godlike tendencies and prowess that a man <laughs> like Mike Possel possesses at the poker table when he can stare at his crotch and identify what the players have in the hand. I mean, how could a person like that ever possibly fathom? How could she ever get to the point she's at in her life and ever fathom what a man plugged into the matrix like a Mike Possel would do? I under- yeah, that pff, make, it makes complete sense to I me, just, man. I, my little girl brain can't understand his awesomeness. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. <laughs> Guys, I want to give a big shout out to everyone who's been watching these. We have 4,200 people watching this on YouTube right now. That is amazing. We have a few hundred people watching this on Twitch. Uh, I've been enjoying these live streams. Veronica's been in all the live streams. It seems like you're there every night rocking with us the entire time, man. You're like, I, you're I'm active depressed. in the chat. Like you're just, you're- I'm depressed when you're not streaming. I, I, I put up that tweet and I, I was like, I don't know what to do with my life. I just don't want to do anything except for watch Joey stream. That's pretty much all I want to do. Even if it's not this, even if it's not Fossil Gate. If it's something else, it's just, I feel like the community is coming together now. It really, it really, it, it, it's quite unique. It's quite a rare thing to see. Yeah, it's amazing, right? I don't know. I'm, I've just kind of thrown myself into it and I'm saying, I'm not, I, I, I'm watching. I want to see. And at the least, it's completely entertaining poker content. And at the most is that maybe we can put a stop to this in the future. We can clean up other live stream games. We can increase right. the security around these live stream games because the ease of, doing something out of line in most of these operations is, uh, let's just say it, it, it's at a level zero and there's a hundred levels, it's level zero. It's very and easy I, to do. It's I just e- want to bring yeah. up, I want to bring up a point about you and I, I really Uh-oh. need to commend you. I need to commend Berkey. And then Doug, Doug eventually uh, got into this also, but I think initially it was you. And I really want to say that we're always talking about bringing more women into poker. Part of the way to do that one of the ways to do that is to talk to women like they're a peer. 
do not dismiss what they're saying just because they're not uh, me i was not at the point when i came to anyone or i came to you where i was studying hands every day and i knew exactly what where what spot was going wrong in the hand but you did believe me you spoke to me like a peer you didn't dismiss anything i said and i have and i i have to say that this is the best way to keep women or get women into poker is is talk hands with them like a peer talk to them like they understand talk to them like you would talk to your buddies and it's appreciated. And Joey, I, I have to commend you and I have to um, thank you for everything you've done because I think I would have been burned at the stake if it wasn't for you. That's fucking good. I'm telling yeah. you, yeah. I That's... wouldn't have been able to go, go into Sacramento again if it wasn't for you just breaking down these hands. And I think you have a reputation. People trust you, people like you, people think you're knowledgeable. I don't yeah. know if I would have had the same impact if I would have posted this stuff on two plus two. I mean, I'm not saying I wouldn't have, but I think that your impact is greater. And I just appreciate the way you talk to me. So you're welcome. Shout out to you, Joey. Thank you. I mean, you're welcome. You're welcome. I mean, you are, you know, it's very nice, right? I, I don't know. I try to treat everybody that way. That's the type of, I like to be treated with respect. I like to treat people with respect too. It doesn't matter to me their, their level of anything, right? No matter followers, money, poker, skill, any like right. man, woman. I don't know. I try to, cause I get so many messages from people. I don't talk to people continuously very often. You're one of the people that I, I do like to follow and I, I do have a relationship with in terms of going back and forth and just joking around and that type of thing like that. So, you know, yeah, it's, uh, I, I mean, I, it's it's crazy to see, right? I don't have no words. I, I feel a little weird, uncomfortable in situations like that. You know, the, the, the those sorts of things, even like seeing think, p things people are saying, it's, it's, you know, overwhelming in some ways and it's unusual. And, and, you know, I didn't really do this type of thing for any of that. I just, I did it because like, I wanted to help you out and, and then once I saw it, I'm just like this, you know, it's just sad. It's really sad. You know what I mean? Any, just, anyone with a set of morals or ethics, strong set of ethics saw ripped. this, they she's would getting be ripped like, off. These fucking guy. I'm, I mean, I can't believe this fucking are, guy. Do they man. not like our soft, sweet conversation? What's going on? I think I'm not looking at the chat on purpose. <laughs> I think that the chat, the chat, the chat's enjoying things very, very much. The chat okay. is enjoying things. I'm going to give you a question. I got, I've been drinking water now, so I need to go to the bathroom and I don't want to, I don't want to uh, go to the bathroom on the stream. So I'm going to give you one question to ask you. I'm going to pull up a question from the chat. I'm not going to cry again. Calm the fuck down. Get Matt Delaney. Jesus Christ, man. Okay. All right. Sometimes a man gets emotional and a man's not afraid. Were we emotional. both crying together at the same time? That would be something. Moment. Let's not. Let's please not do that. No. I think let's, we I think we both did almost. No, no, let's not. I mean, is what it is. Let's not. Let's not. Let's not do that. So let me, uh, let me, let me get a question from the chat here, guys, while I go to the, uh, the bathroom here because... Uh, when I do these live streams, it's uh, it's very fun. So one question actually people had was about Berkey and Christian Soto went up there to play the high stake game. And some people seem to say that you were on a car ride and you had not warned them that this might be happening with the Mike Postle until after the game. So can you sort of, I guess, talk about that a little bit too? Right, sure. You go pee. Okay, go <laughs> I can hear, I can still hear. Yeah, so um, the week before the game uh, that Berkey and Christian Soto were in, and also Marley. Uh, that was, I think I was slowly getting Anthony to take over my game. And Anthony reached out to me and he's like, hey, are you gonna get, um, he wanted some of the fun players for my game. And he's like, hey, are you gonna get Frank and Mike in my game? And I was like, hey, are you sure you want Mike? And he's like, yeah, yeah, you know, you're crazy if you think he's cheating, he's not fucking cheating. Um, I was like, okay, I mean, I'm, what do I know? I'm wrong. So, um, I had believed that Justin had done an investigation. I had, I believed that there was due, due diligence done on Stone's part. I also trusted my friend, Anthony and some of my other friends who were like, look, he's probably just clicking buttons. He, he may not be, there were still some people that were saying like, there's a possibility of him cheating, but no one could prove it. So. I was like, fuck, I can't ruin this guy's reputation. Anthony doesn't believe he's cheating. You know, I, you know, Anthony would be like, what the fuck? Why are you like, do, he would be mad at me if I had accused Mike of cheating in the car with, with Christian. Like I had no evidence. Like, what am I gonna do? Hey guys, I just picked you up and I'm not hundred percent sure. And not everyone thinks he's cheating, but I think there's a guy cheating. I, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know them. It was something that I had a hard time talking to anyone about unless they were my really close friend and also i just i i text Berkey, i'm like i didn't want to be that girl that's like gossiping 
oh, you know, I don't really know poker, but let me just tell you, you know, I didn't want to be that gossip in poker and ruin a guy's reputation. I'm wrong. And there's a a part of me that was like, I'm probably wrong. I might be wrong. So especially Anthony's like, I want him in the game. He's hella action. Let's get him in the game. Okay. So, but then when I did commentary, I was like, fuck this shit. Mm -hmm. Nothing's changed. And after it wasn't, it wasn't Marley's hand. It wasn't just Marley's hand, but that was when I was like, nothing's changed. Nothing's been done. Fuck this. And then I got it like a week of rage. And then I put out a tweet. Well, I think that makes sense in that you don't want to be known as someone who's like accusing people of cheating to random people in the community. And then if they go there and say, Hey, like, are you cheating? And then they're like, no, you know what I'm saying? So I can understand right. your reservations in that situation to go and say, okay, I don't want to be the big gossiper. Like, you know, it, it just, it makes a lot of sense. You know, I, I can understand that too. Trust me when I tell you, if I knew for sure that he was cheating or this, I, I mean, if there was a way that I would have known, I would have fucking told him, I would have told him before he got on the plane, like, look, there's a guy I think is cheating in the plane or in the, in the game. Like you can come in, you can come into Oakland if you want, but I would have fucking told him, even though I didn't, I've never, I had never met him before he flew into Oakland. Yeah. I'm a, uh, I'm enjoying the comments in the chat today, guys. The people are really enjoying you, Veronica. Christopher Peterson donated. He said, there's two things I like to ship. Big Pots and Joey and Veronica. Thank you, Christopher Peterson. Poker Chip Forum. Anyone think Stones will shut down, rebrand because of all the lawsuits? Uh, I don't think so. It seems like they're probably going to go business business as usual. And I've seen from messages that they are reaching out to people who played and attempting to make it right, whatever that means, with these people who were in these games. So it appears that maybe they are doing some damage control. This was just a private message that I've seen that was shared to me. So oh, wow. yeah, we'll, we'll see what takes place here. Uh, you know, it's still very early on. They brought in an investigation team. The lead investigator is, uh, is, is a defense attorney that I guess used to represent some of the owners. I don't know the specifics about the, the person. I think he they... used to be on staff with Stones. Okay. I mean, I give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's see what happens. Let's let, them, right. let's let them run it here. People talk about the fat train guy, Justin Kelly, who did commentary as well. I reached out to him. He Justin. was the one in my video, yeah. I reached out to him as well. We had a little bit back and forth. Uh, I think that we're going to have a conversation. He says he's 100% not involved with the situation here. So I... Can I just say one thing about Justin? Sure. Um, people were were really um, aggressive with how he responded in my video. And when I put nothing to see here, I didn't say that he was saying nothing to see here, but it was just kind of like, I, it, it was dismissive. I was upset at the time that he dismissed me, but I'll just, I will say that that's Justin all the time. Justin's this like super high energy, um, like almost like a character all the time. Mm-hmm. And so it, I wouldn't say that he was just doing that in the booth, just, you know, just to cover something up. I don't think that I, he was actually like that all the time. If you look at all the shows, he's like, yeah, we got a Floppasaurus Rex coming in and blah, blah, blah. And it was like very gimmicky. I know Jake and I were like, oh God, it's so gimmicky. We didn't like it, but that was his thing. That was the way he did commentary. And that's the way he actually is all the time in life. That makes a lot of sense. If you ever hang out with him, he's like super high energy. I'm not sure, man. I mean, listen, I, I give everyone the benefit of the doubt until I know something, but it worries Watch, me that watching this take place and hearing the commentary and I feel like he's been the main proponent of building this man up to be what he what he's presented to be. It's just very hard for me to, to He's not best have... friends with JFK. He's right. really good friends with Mike. It's yeah, it's it hard for would... me to not have suspicions. Just it just seems too It would surprise me if he didn't know and turn a blind eye, but I can't say that he does. Like yeah. he pro I mean, I think in order for this to happen, they couldn't have told a lot of people. Right. It wouldn't be successful if everyone knows. Right. So they had to be really tight knit about it. And also, if you're spreading the money, you know, they probably wanted to keep as much for themselves as possible. That's a good. That's another as good point possible. too. As possible. As possible. Exactly. That's you very like true. That? I, I I have not heard that joke at all this week. Ever. <laughs> and uh, you are the first person to make that joke. <laughs> at any point in time during you're this welcome week. so i thank you very much for that joke that was very nicely done thank you very much matt berkey in the chat said solve for why it's okay this stuff is super common in high stakes where players look out for one another 
in small pools with just a warning of, hey, keep an eye on so-and-so. But in smaller games with bigger pools, it's tougher to ask. It's, t it's a tougher ask to throw accusations around, which makes complete sense, right? In a higher stakes game where it's a more private setting, where more money's on the line, yeah, I think hearing these things is, is something that you do hear from time to time. Like, hey, stay away from that home game. There might be doing something out of line yeah. there. It might be using whatever. There's something going on. They don't pay you out, whatever. There's a, there's a number of different reasons why they would warn you to stay away from certain operations. And you hear that quite often too. So, yeah. but in terms of like in a live casino setting, it's very rare. I've never heard anyone being accused of of cheating in a live home game situation or a live, right, I'm sorry, back, live casino game situation. It was so yeah. fucking obvious, right? When we put everything together, yeah. it was so obvious. It, it's just, it's crazy to me. I'm just blown away at everything. I'm yeah. completely overwhelmed. To be I, honest. I, I mean, we're, I don't even know how you aren't overwhelmed, right? Like this attention thrown on you, this sort of, uh, at the front of the poker world, right? I mean, for, before you were commentating on stones, you, you were posting on Instagram, you're posting on Twitter, you're having a good time. And now, you're on Sports Center being discussed, and every single person in the poker world knows your name at this point in time because of your involvement in this situation. Most people, I think, look at you in a very favorable way for what you did, and I, I can understand. Not the like, first 48 hours I posted, but yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's been completely overwhelming. My phone is chronically blowing up. Um, I'm not. Uh, I, I don't know. I think people are looking, you know, I don't feel like I'm this knight in shining armor and saving poker. I think I was just, I just think I have a, a set of ethics and morals that are good and I wanted to uphold the integrity of the game and I think it's fucking unfair to be cheated. Yeah. I mean, it's just that simple. And I think it's mostly you. I think you deserve all the credit, just to be honest. Oh, uh, well, I probably will not be taking this credit because I think a lot of people did a lot of great work out there too. I think at some point in time, I was the lead investigator on the situation in that I was just uncovering these things and posting about it and sort of driving the attention towards what's happening. But then at some point in time, I just started getting inundated with messages on every platform all day long where right. I would try to sift through the material I was being sent to me. And I would say, okay, I feel like this is relevant. I'll look at this, I'll look at that. And I'm sure there's a lot of good stuff I missed. Like the guy Gumpenstein, he reached out to me first and said, hey, but I, I, didn't, I didn't get back to him because I just got so many messages. And then he made his own video on his own that uncovered the mannerisms and play styles. And I feel like there's right. a lot of information that, that, that I missed in this thing. And even yesterday, I got a message that was a tweet that Postle made where Postle alleged that the RFID error took place. And he actually had a, a different hand when it showed that he had a complete bluff. So it's like, the, uh, there's a lot of stuff out there that we maybe haven't seen yet too. And whether it's relevant or not to in terms of the case is debatable, but I still find it incredibly interesting and fascinating. So the RFID stuff in hindsight now, I remember um, kind of a year or two after we started, if we had RFID errors, we kind of had to restart the whole thing because if like the eight of spades wasn't registering, it wouldn't register for any single hand. And it wouldn't be like, the switching of hands, although I've heard that happens too. It just, I think Berkey did an, uh, an incredible job with his video explaining how the RFID works. And when his video came out, I was like, yeah, actually I remember when we had those issues initially, that's exactly how it went. But then later on, I don't know, I think the commentators also, you trust, you trust your tech, you trust the people uh, that are running the game and they're like, nope, the hand was wrong. And the commentary was like, oh, okay, it was wrong. Obviously it was wrong because this doesn't fucking make sense. Mm -hmm. So I, I think people getting, uh, going hard on the commentary for that, I think it was unfair. You're, you're trusting the people putting on the show. You can't sit there in the commentary booth being like, oh, what the fuck are you saying? Are you lying? Who's fucking lying? Just as fucking lying? Who's in the chat? They're all lying. Like everyone's fucking up. Everyone's fucking lying to me. You can't do that. You have to be like, oh, the tech guys told me the hands were wrong. They're fucking wrong. That's it. Well, my favorite part is when I listen to Postle in the booth and, and somebody in the chat calls him out for something and then he offers to fly them out to play in the game with him and completely take their money and he calls them bums and he shames them Such for having less followers and he basically just insults everything about these people. And I, I mean, I, I, I find I, it's hard to... The attitude I've seen shown by him in these interviews, it's very hard to... Uh, get behind him the way he seems to be treating some of these other players who he's trying to get into his game. And now knowing what we know in retrospect, it's completely, fu it's just fucking yeah, ridiculous. He's a, he's a narcissist and it's very juvenile, right? 
it it's like wouldn't you be wouldn't you have fun with someone who's who's like trying to play your heads up for roles to be like okay you know great wonderful i we'd love to have you uh, mm -hmm. i'll roll up i'll have a drink with you before the game uh, instead like they get very juvenile he got very juvenile and and belittling people and yeah um i don't know if he had any ad hominem attacks against people but it, it's his response to a lot of things that i said a lot of things that were said about him are very juvenile None of us are fucking jealous of you, Mike. None of us are jealous of you. Um, I think there's a lot of successful poker players in the room. They're not jealous of you. Let me let me think about this. Am I jealous of Mike Possible? Let me think about the ways. <laughs> let me describe Mike. It depends Possible. on why he's looking at his crotch. Let right? me describe. Let me describe Mike Possible. What what would how would we character characterize a Mike Possible? Uh, all right, a man who has an obsession with his. Lower body region, clearly, right? He has memes. A he has, you who, don't have memes, do you have a, a memes? Meme, yeah, a, me, a guy, a man who's been touted as Jesus Christ himself. A man who's been called a god by me 5,000 times this week. Uh, okay, what do we else know about Mike Postle? Uh, one of the top winners, I'm sorry, the top winner of all time in Ultimate Bet history, okay? Um... What else 2015 do we know about a, Annie Up Player of the Year. What else do we know about a Mike Possel that I, that we'd be jealous about here? I mean, he has shown an ability to navigate poker in a, in a very rare and unique way, and obviously did he beat Durr? Beat he, he Durr also heads beat, up. He also beat Ben Affleck too. Ben Affleck. Right, and Matt Damon. One of the best. I, maybe not best. Matt Damon. Yeah, I mean, listen, it is what ben it is. Affleck. He obviously possesses an ability to play at a very high CTO level, and. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I think we're, I think we're all a little bit envious of the ability to play. Not so. Are you sure that Justin guy said GTO doesn't exist? I just want to make this clear. He I'm a hundred percent. I'm a hundred percent sure. And I remember like my jaw being on the floor, and I wrote down. I sat in the car like so upset after I spoke with him, and I wrote it down because I was in disbelief, and I texted to Bart, and I texted to. Uh, I believe Matt Holtzclaw, uh, a, a couple players, and I was like, this is fucking unbelievable. And they are like, he just doesn't understand poker. Yeah. He just doesn't have the insight into poker to know what looks shady and what doesn't. More Winning more pots doesn't mean you're a better player over, you know, winning every single pot over two years doesn't mean you're a great player. It means you're God. Can you ever hear the word God the same after hearing me say that? Say I was, that. I was an atheist until last Monday, and you converted me, and now I believe. I no. believe in God. I'm going back to church. Are you really? Yes. You might I, be. I could see. I could see you going back to church for sure. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, after this, we all, after this, we all need a little church, man. Luca right. Porzingis on YouTube with the donation. Thanks for both of you guys. Everyone donating throughout this time. Thank you very much as well. Everyone's very, very nice. They're very nice people out there. And uh, and we'll, let's get a couple more questions from the chat and then we'll kind of wrap things up. And I think this will go down in the history. I feel like when, I, I'm just thinking when people go back and they watch this 10 years from now, I want them to be able to have a progression of videos to follow. They see me, my first time I look at this, the first time I, I look at a session, they see me in that mode. They see me get more fired up. They see me make more revelations. Then they see other people hop in about video four or five. Then it goes through. They watch Doug's video to get a, a better explanation. They watch the podcast me and Doug did. They watch the podcast me. You know, it's like this progression of things they get to follow along the way. And it's something I wish was for an ultimate bet did this, like with the ultimate bet cheating scandal. It, the information's so spread out that it's really hard to understand what the hell went down there. And I, I'm thinking about the history books here. And I want someone to, to know exactly what took place. And and we're going to keep following this story until the story reaches its conclusion at some point in time. And I don't know when exactly that's going to be, but I intend to continue to cover it because people are clearly interested in this. And we got to hope this doesn't take place again. Wait, I want to know, are you going to be our our um, courtroom analyst? You know how the uh, People's Court would have, uh, what was the guy that owns TMZ that used to sit outside the courtroom and be like, oh, yes. Harvey, Levin's, into... Harvey Levenstein or yeah, something like that? Yeah, yeah. He was on court TV and he would like stand outside the courtroom and he was a courtroom analyst. We need to get you as the courtroom analyst for this case and um, sit in and then 
then live stream on break to give us updates on how the trial is going. Yeah, that's your new job, Joey. I mean, okay. Who? I, I, everyone in the chat, if you want Joey to do the court, be the courtroom analyst for the Mike Possel lawsuit, type one. Type one, exactly. Yes, type one. Guys, I wear this shirt for a reason. Um, if anyone can figure out the reason, you'll you guys will let me know. Why do you think Mike Possel did an interview with Mike the Mouth Madison for two hours, where he proclaimed his innocence and and talked about how he's one of the best players in the world? Look, I think that he doesn't want someone to ask him questions. He doesn't want to answer questions he can't answer. Mm -hmm. uh, he, I think we all know Mike gave him a soft interview. He wanted a soft interview. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to, does he want to talk to you? I mean, I'm sure you would have given him platform, right? You would have, you would have let him on the show. Yeah, I, I, I invited him on more than one time. Yeah, I definitely did. Yeah, and I, I would still love to try have a conversation with Mike. And I feel like at some point in time in our lives, me and Mike will do a podcast together and we'll talk about it. So I, I cannot wait till that day comes to be. I mean, I don't want to see the podcast if he's going to continually deny this. I feel like it'll, know, it, it'll be at a point in time where the conversation will be a little different. Right. I don't want to hear the excuse is I'm the greatest poker player in the world. Right. I, I have a feeling we're not going to hear that when this takes place. I just, I just don't see that happening. Right. So I look forward to that day. I guess Mike Postle, we can assume Mike Postle's watching out there. Veronica, do you have something to say to him? Do you have any words you'd like him to, to think about or to know? I, I just think what he did is disgusting. I think what he did to his friends, his family, inadvertently, this is all disgusting. And you should be ashamed of yourself. Yeah. Well, Mike Postle, I got to say, you're going down in history books in the out of line hall of fame that we have around here on the podcast. One of the most out of line people I've ever seen. And I think that Mike Postle is enjoying this, uh, this, this, this status that it's been thrown upon him. I think he enjoys the people. He doesn't the like hunt. the spotlight. He doesn't like the spotlight. I think that he in this position right now is a fighter. I don't think he gives up. I think he likes to manipulate the situation likes to take advantage of people. And uh, I, I think he's really kind of enjoying this back and forth battle. I'll be very curious to see what exactly takes place with him in the lawsuit in terms of any criminal charges that might come from this situation, or if he comes out and proves his innocence with some sort of data that he alleges to be compiling. And, um, and yeah, I mean, listen, I feel like that's where we go from here. Veronica, what else you got planned here? Do you have something else you're putting up? I know you're going to go on a podcast with Doug Polk on Friday. Where do you uh, where do you plan to go from here? Where can people follow you if they want to stay up to date on the life and times of one Veronica Brill? Um, I am on uh, Twitter. If you okay. don't already follow follow me, angry underscore Polak. Instagram is angry underscore Polak V. Because okay. some dude took angry Polak. Um, God forbid you just you know, made it your name. I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't want to do that. Um, I, I don't know. We'll see. I, I just need to chill for a little bit. I don't want to, I don't want to be, you know, rubbing anything in anyone's face. I think this is a horrible situation. I don't want to be on social media posting bikini pics and being like, Oh fuck, nothing's wrong. Everybody, you know, this is a big fucking deal. I think, um, we need to take this seriously. I, I do joke a lot. That's the only way I can survive half the time. But, um, hmm. yeah, I mean, I don't think I'm going to be, doing much for a little while. I might go throw some chips around at Bay 101, play some 225 or something, but that's about it. And then work my day job. Grind, grind at the computer. <laughs> I think that sounds like a pretty good plan. Yeah. I think that sounds like Thanks. a pretty, pretty good plan for sure. So I appreciate you having me on. I appreciate everything you're doing. I appreciate Berkey for publicly being as objective as possible and trying to keep people level headed when this all went down. Um, just everyone on Twitter, all the pros who, you know, took a gander at all of these hands. So, yeah, I, and two I, plus two, two plus two, everybody in two plus two, man, the analytics team of two plus two are amazing. The graphs, did you see the possible, uh, Google spreadsheet? Yeah. What? So I think that came from on a live stream. I said, Hey, can somebody make like, if we could make this, that'd be great. And then the next day in my two plus two thread in my podcast thread, 
it someone actually made it and i was like this is the greatest spreadsheet i've ever seen in my life you can like, see money money made money earned by uh seat yeah it's, <laughs> and, it's what seat he's wearing who is commentating where the keys were where the phone right. was everything like that so yeah i put a comment in there and he responded to it was pretty cool I'm like oh, yeah. Yeah, i got the spreadsheet open all the time in my background <laughs> it's a nice spreadsheet yeah that guy did great work guys out, out there in the chat listen man I, if you guys have been tuning in i love you guys very much it's been really really fun doing the live streams i'm gonna keep up the live streams I'll probably do one tomorrow, Friday. Me and Doug are doing a podcast on Saturday because our content bet ends. So I'm going to be posting some uh, podcast highlight clips on a new podcast clip channel as well, too. So look out for that as well. Uh, we got the Patreon link in the description below, which I'm just shining up for this because people said I should do it. And I don't know what it is, but I'm going to give away a picture of myself staring at my crotch like Mike Postle in an Under Armour hat to anyone who, uh, who goes to that link as well, too. And, Did you uh, see the cake on Twitter? The Under yeah, Armour hat it, cake. <laughs> it, yeah, if you if you join the top Mike Postle God Mode level, you will get a photo of my new bone conductor hat and of me with my vibrator that I was inspired to get by Mike Postle. Actually, that last part's not going to be true. I'm not going to get that. So, uh, but told, you didn't say what kind of vibrator, Joey. I saved that for the live. I'll save that for the uh, live stream audience. I don't want to drop that on the podcast. I was getting a little bit carried away with with what that what that toy is on the because uh, it just makes sense. It makes it explains a lot. Honestly, it really does. So, so yeah, guys, that's it. We'll be back with more content here over the next day or two, probably tomorrow. People are loving the live stream, so we're gonna keep it going. Everyone on Twitch, YouTube, much love, Veronica. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you, thank you so very, much. very much for coming on here. Thank you for bringing this to our attention. Everybody out here, take care. Peace out. That's it.